Hello everyone, my name is Demis Mu and this is my assistant, The Foot. Today we'll talk about Thales from Miletus, the first philosopher. We'll examine his claim that all things have their origin in water and explain how his thinking differs from mythology. According to Thales, the world begins with water and the source of everything that exists is water. Thales is not the first one to say something like this. Mythology is also filled with sentences like, and then the world came to be. Not only that, but there are myths older than Thales that say that the world came to be from water. For example, in Babylon there was a myth about two primordial gods, Abzu, the god of fresh water, and his partner Tiamat, who was the goddess of salt water. Abzu and Tiamat, the story goes, mixed their waters and gave birth to other gods, who then created the world. So what's the difference between this myth and what Thales says about the origin of the world? Both claim that the world has its origin in water. Why is then what Thales says not mythological? Why is he suddenly a philosopher? There are two differences between Thales' statement and this myth, as well as mythology in general. The first difference is that Thales thinks water as an abstraction. The second is that his statement is supported by arguments. Neither is the case in mythology. So abstraction and arguments. Let's look at abstraction first. What is an abstraction? Well, it's easier to begin with the concrete, which is the opposite of abstract. So what's concrete? Concrete things are those you can single out and point to, saying this here. For example, every time you want to point to water you have to point to a glass of water, to a river, to the ocean, to something presentable before you. Concrete is something tangible and individual. It's the same thing with gods that represent water. Abzu and Tiamat are a personification of water. As gods they represent water in human form. Because they are individual gods with their individual features, they are still concrete. Abstract is the opposite of concrete. To abstract means you take something concrete and present before you, and then you take away some of its features. You can take away shape from this dog, or this cloud, and think the idea of shape as such. Take numbers also as an example. You can have two apples, but you can also abstract a number two. In fact, mathematics mostly operates on the abstract level without basing its equations in concrete particular things. This is how Thales thinks of water. He does not think water is this distinct river or the ocean. He also does not think water as this individual god. Instead, he thinks water as such, in the abstract. Why is thinking water as an abstraction relevant? The main reason is the second thing we said makes Thales different from mythology. Arguments. When you personify water, like in the myth, you will explain the origin of the world in the form of a story. And this is what the word myth originally meant, a story. Abzu and Tiamat meet and give birth to other gods. One of their children, Marduk, rips apart Tiamat and shapes the world from her body parts. So when you make your origin of the world something concrete, you tend to deduce the world by following what concrete things can do. Water gods can give birth to other gods, kill one another, and so on. When you think of water in the abstract, however, you don't have such thrilling stories to explain how things came to be. What you are left with are arguments. And this is the central difference between philosophy and mythology. You either believe in a myth or you don't. In philosophy, you have to provide arguments. So what arguments are there for Thales' claim about water? We don't know if Thales ever wrote anything, nothing survives in any case, so all the arguments are later reconstructions from other philosophers. But one argument I'm interested in is that perhaps Thales thought of water as the origin because water can change its state, becoming steam and ice. What does this argument tell us? Well, the most important thing we can see is that Thales focuses on some of the central features of water the fact that it can change its state. In other words, when you think of water in the abstract, you also think the essential features of water. 
not what water is as a glass of water or a river, nor how water in human form behaves like, but water as such. And then it becomes clear why Thales chose water in the first place. On the one hand, Thales looks for the stable, unchanging origin of all things. On the other, that stable and unchanging origin must also explain the emergence of all things, which means it must also explain change and diversity of things that we witness all the time. If you take a rock as your origin, you won't get far. You don't see rocks changing that often. They are too stiff and concrete and make for bad abstractions. You would need some sculptor to explain how the world emerged from the rock. Water, on the other hand, is a fluid that appears to transform on its own and we witness ice or steam every day, which means that it is a great candidate to think the unchanging, stable origin, as well as explain change and diversity of things in the world. To conclude, two important features define Thales as a philosopher. First, abstraction. Thinking that operates on the level of abstraction as opposed to concrete individual things. Second, arguments. The explanation of how things come to be from the abstract principle, in this case water, is not guided by narrative or supported by belief, but by argumentation. Next time, we'll talk about Anaximander, a follower of Thales, as well as about his idea on what is the origin of all things. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.